So I have a website here that is for uh, for running races. And one of the things that's very common is having fundraisers that uh, uh, a lot of races will will associate fundraisers. That way you can raise for uh, for good charities and, and so forth. So let's say that I want to create my data abstraction layer, my DAL here as, as a service to work with that fundraising and, and provide that on the website. So maybe I go in and I say, hey, um, create a service for fundraiser. Uh, include search by ID and race ID. There we go. And I'll go ahead and I'll send this. And the first thing that I want to highlight here while I'm doing this, and I'm not using agent mode um, just because I wanted to go a little bit quicker, but all of this holds true with agent mode or really however it is that you might be um, communicating with uh, with Copilot. So I'm just using um, um, ask mode. And what we're going to notice right up here is three references. And this is probably, I zoomed in too far. There we go. The most important uh, little sub window inside of chat is these references, because this is going to tell you the context. This is going to tell you what Copilot considered when it created the suggested code. And so we're going to notice that it included three files. The first file that it included is fundraisingservice.ts. Okay, well, that's the file that I had open. That, that kind of makes sense. I think I think we all expected that. But then the next one is this Copilot instructions markdown file. And this sits inside of my .github. And if I open this up, what we're going to notice is I have a high level description of everything that's going on inside of this project. So I highlight what this is about. So it's two related projects instead of a mono repo. I've got runner tracks. I've got race management. And then if I scroll down, I can see all the information about, uh, about runner tracks and, and how it is that I want my code to be created the on-site race management tool, how that's set up, and then some specifics about how I want my code to be structured. So again, thinking back to that context, if you want to make sure that Copilot has that background of, hey, this is what I'm building, this is how I'm building it, you can put that into Copilot instructions. I really like this to help in a couple of different areas. The first is if you ever see Copilot doing something a particular way and you don't want it done that way, then then tell Copilot. Like if you see it like commonly making a mistake, then this is a great place to put that into that Copilot instruction. So let's say, for example, that when you're using Copilot, it keeps wanting to create React component uses, uh, using classes rather than functions. And we know that all the cool kids uh, create their React components using, using functions. If you want it done that particular way, you can put that inside of your Copilot instructions. And that's going to be included then in every single call that I make to chat. This is not used for code completion or next edit suggestion. It's just going to be inside of chat, but you'll notice that it will be there inside of every single call that we make. Hmm. Now, that also just bring up a, a, another very important point here and, and a little bit of a best practice that the information that I put inside of here should be relevant then for basically every round trip that I'm making because there's always going to be a limit to the number of tokens that are considered. And if you wind up providing too much context, too much information, either something can get lost along the way um, because you wind up uh, running out of buffer, or it could be just a little bit trickier for Copilot to figure out what's going to be important here. So as you're building this out, you really want to be thinking about high level. What are the common things? What's the project level information? And speaking about project, it's also worth highlighting the fact that this becomes part of your project. So this is now shared with all of your developers. So the bit of time that you're going to spend right inside of here of, of putting all of that in, that's going to really help your, uh, help your developers. But you're also going to notice that I'm including uh, another file here. And this is my Prisma schema. If you're not familiar with Prisma, um, it's an object relational mapper for, uh, for TypeScript. It's absolutely fantastic. Gives you uh, strong typing and, and things like that. It's wonderful. Now, because of the fact that I'm going to be working an awful lot with the database, I need to make sure that Copilot understands my schema. And so I can make sure that that's now included. Now, including that individual file, that's actually part of your settings. So if I open up my settings JSON file, I can actually see code generation instructions. And then there is that, that schema file there. So if there's anything that you always want to make sure that Copilot sees, you can include that there. 
So I've got Copilot instructions. That's just automatic. Call it copilot-instructions.md. Put that inside your .github folder. You're done. Any additional files that you wanted to consider, you can put that into your settings. I put that into my settings for the project, but you could also put that into your user settings as well. 